My name is Sydney Fry. I'm the nutrition editor with Cooking Light Magazine. Today we are making one of my all-time favorite recipes, especially as the weather starts to warm up and it starts to get hot outside. Four ingredient frozen yogurt. Um, I kind of started playing with this recipe last summer when I had a difficult time finding frozen yogurt recipes frozen yogurt on the market that I actually liked you could buy and same with the frozen yogurt shops they get expensive they have lots of sugar so I figured how hard can it be to make frozen yogurt in your own kitchen so we're gonna play with it today and I will show you how to do it it's very simple we are starting with 2% Greek yogurt one of my all-time favorite ingredients um, I pretty much eat it for breakfast every single morning and I like the 2% here because that little bit of fat really makes a difference in this recipe. It adds a lot of mouthfeel, it adds some creaminess, um, and it kind of helps cut the tangy tartness that is so common with Greek yogurt. So we're going to put two cups in a bowl. And I use plain because we're going to be able to control the amount of sugar we add here. A lot of flavored yogurts are loaded with sugar. You would be surprised at how much they have in there. And, and yogurt does have naturally occurring sugars. So if you see that number on the label and it's plain, that's because it's from the lactose in the dairy. Alright, so we have two cups of yogurt and then we are going to add Anywhere between two and three tablespoons of honey, more if you want it sweeter. Um, I tend to like mine on the more tart, tangy side, so I don't add as much, but the sugar is actually really important in this recipe too because it helps slow down the formation of crystals, which yogurt tends to have a good, you know, more so than say cream. In ice cream, yogurt has more water in it, so it can, get a little bit icy sometimes, but sugar actually helps slow down that crystallization. So that's about two tablespoons. I'm gonna mix that together. And I love honey here. You can use any form of sugar, really, or any form of sweetener. Honey has just those floral notes. Um, and it's liquid already, so it mixes in really well. A lot of ice creams use sugar because you're cooking a custard on the stove and that sugar is able to melt so you don't taste that granular mouthfeel that um, you might have here in the yogurt. But it works too, or brown sugar. Our users um, love honey. We love honey too, mm -hmm. and it actually adds a really good balanced flavor to the tart tangy Greek yogurt. So next we are going to add half of a vanilla bean. Now vanilla beans are one of my all-time favorite ingredients. They're expensive but in something like this where you're only using a small amount of ingredients and the flavor is going to be very forward it's totally, totally worth the difference between a vanilla bean and vanilla extract. Extract is great in muffins, quick breads, cupcakes, baking, but I think in ice creams and frozen yogurts and yogurt and even whipped creams, the vanilla bean makes a huge difference. We were just talking about, you can smell it from, you know, 10 feet away, how floral it is. Now, to cut into the vanilla bean, we already cut it in half, and you're just gonna split it down the middle and then we're going to open it up. I kind of feel like I'm doing surgery. <laughs> and there's going to be hundreds of these teeny itty bitty little, you know, like when you buy vanilla bean ice cream, you see all the specks in there. That's what it is. I'm trying to get this open here. I'm going to just have to cut the whole thing in half, actually. It's not as scary as it looks. So some of our users are saying that they've never seen vanilla beans in their um, grocery stores. They tend to be in the baking section or the spice section by the vanilla extract. You'll find them usually in a glass tube. And like I said, they're definitely more expensive, but totally worth the splurge. So we've cut this in half. I obviously used the sharp end, but to 
pull the beans out, use the, the dull end of the knife to sort of flatten, and you just scrape along the bottom. And all of those are teeny tiny little seeds that we are about to mix in. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. really make a difference in the flavor. So there's the first half. And then... And we actually got these at the Fresh Market, which some of our users have mm -hmm. got them there too. So if you have a Fresh Market... I know on the holidays, Costco usually sells them. And you can buy them in bulk there. And what's wonderful, once you have this leftover pod, here's a good tip. Don't throw these away. Put them in your vanilla extract bottles and it adds a far more pungent, fresh flavor to your vanilla extract. You can also put it in liquor or rum or vodka. You can infuse things with it. You can um. add it to oils. Canola oil is a great, if you're gonna use canola oil for baking, store it in some canola oil that you wanna use in sweet things. Don't throw these guys away. Melissa said she makes vanilla bean butter. That sounds Fabulous. Yeah. I like that idea. I wonder what she puts it in. Melissa, what do you put your vanilla bean butter in? I guess pancakes and waffles and um, toast even. So mm -hmm. see, you can see how the vanilla bean is starting to kind of disperse. They can be hard to find though, but most um, stores are starting to carry them now. All the beans. Yep. And that one, all it was was that half the vanilla bean, and look how many we've got in there. Mm -hmm. And some have escaped too. All right. Oh, it smells so good. I wish I could smell this. We need a scratch and sniff on. <laughs> on Facebook Live. On Facebook Live. We do need that. Okay. So we mixed this up. Oh, one more part about this recipe. So I'm going to, we're doing this without an ice cream machine because not everybody has an ice cream machine at home. You can put everything in the ice cream machine, which we'll, we'll kind of talk about that at the end. But everything we're doing today, you do need some sort of blender or food processor, but you do not need an ice cream maker. And not everyone has one at home, so it makes this a lot easier. Okay, yeah, I may need, let's see, we're gonna put this. Need some assistance? Yeah, I may need a bag holder. Um, we are gonna dump this into this bag. It's so good before you even freeze it. <laughs> I know, you could eat it like this. Or you could use this like a fruit dip, couldn't you? Oh yeah. That might be really good for a party. And I was saying earlier, we put, I put about two tablespoons of honey in there. If you, you can taste it now for the sweetness level, but once we freeze it, it's actually going to taste less sweet than it would right now. The cold temperature sort of I don't want to say numb some of the sweetness, but it kind of dulls the amount of sweet that you're able to taste. Um, so if you're not sure, if you're not sure it's quite sweet enough, you may want to add another tablespoon of honey because you won't be able to taste it as well. So we're going to flatten this out. We're going to get all the air bubbles out. And we're going to flatten it in the bag. And we're just going to kind of Smush it out flat because it'll freeze quicker and you don't want that air to give any air bubbles and it'll just freeze a lot faster. And we've got a drawer kind of pull out freezer so we can lay it flat but you know any kind of freezer just as long as it's flat because you don't want to, if you put it all down in the bottom and froze it, it's going to take a lot longer to thaw out and then you're stuck with kind of a block. Whereas this, we're going to end up breaking up and putting it into a food processor to sort of churn it once it's frozen. So it'll freeze a lot quicker this way, and it will be easier to break up into pieces and pull out to make your actual yogurt in a moment. So this is going to go into the freezer. Lay it flat. And because we're magic, we actually already have one frozen. <laughs> So we'll just lay it in there and it goes in for about three to four hours really. You can do it overnight if that's easier um, and it may not take quite that long but until about almost firm. 
So once you've got your frozen, which we pre-froze one of ours, then we're just gonna break it up. And sometimes it'll break into pieces like that. And we're gonna start with our food processor method. Why do we need to put it in the food processor again? So, because we're not using an ice cream churn, the food processor kind of whips some air into it and bump it all in. It kind of like mimics the churning process. And a lot of lighter ice creams, they have air actually whipped into them that sort of make them lighter and fluffier and less dense. So the food processor not only makes it smooth, but it kind of recreates that churn that you would normally have in an ice cream maker. Let's see if we can get all of this out. Renee says, add a little cream or half and half. Well, oh, we are. you are ahead of us. <laughs> Did you read ahead? We are actually about to add a little creamer half and half. As I was saying earlier, when there's less fat in an ice cream or a frozen yogurt, it tends to get icy. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of half and half to this, um, just to add a little bit more of that fat. And there still is only, I mean, there's three grams of fat and half a cup of this total. So we're not adding much, so it's just a splash to, Sort of help emulsify everything too. What do I have in oh. Looking for a tablespoon. Here we go. Alright. We're gonna add two tablespoons of half and half. And then we are going to turn on the food processor and let it churn. And here, we'll just let y'all kind of peek down in. bigger chunks here. We kind of got caught in the... And if you do freeze this overnight, the bag we just pulled out earlier, it may need to sit out for a few minutes to help it sort of loosen up a little bit. What if you don't have a food processor, a blender? You do a blender. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the vanilla is gorgeous. And you want to let this go until it gets... how creamy that looks. Okay, we're almost there. How long?
fabric I think is better for this because it has it's it's gonna make it less icy. Uh -huh. Regular yogurt you could use, but I would strain it first. You can just put cheesecloth in a strainer, and I would strain it overnight if you use regular yogurt. Um, but you can even use whole milk um, yogurt. It's just gonna have a higher fat and calorie content. Okay. See how creamy that is? I think we're ready. Now we are in kind of the soft serve state, which you can eat it like this mm -hmm. if you want. But we're gonna put it into a loaf pan and freeze it for another one to two hours so that we have a scoopable frozen yogurt. So this just goes straight in. Yum, it smells so good. And again, you can totally eat it this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have impatient kids, or husbands, or wives, or friends, <laughs> or yourself. <laughs> um, but we're gonna freeze it for just a little bit longer so that we're able to scoop it out, kind of like ice cream. How much longer does it need to freeze for? One to two hours, really. Um, if you do it longer, like say you make this one night and one the next day, you just may need to pull it out and let it soften because it's going to be pretty hard if you do. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get to the last drop, right? Okay. Now we're going to put plastic wrap over this. This actually works with any of your frozen yogurts or ice creams you have in the freezer. The air, just sealing out the air keeps it from getting freezer burn. Like I said, you can do this with anything in your freezer and you just put the lid back on. Do we have plastic wrap? Ah, here we go. Just take plastic wrap and you're just gonna push down on it to keep the air out. Because we don't want those ice crystals forming on top. Just push down. Just like that. Make sure it's kind of sealed in. There we go. And that goes in the freezer. Lay it flat, obviously, because it might spill out on you if you don't. And then pop that in there for about one to two hours. And here's ours, which we've already got. It's nice and it's not too firm. And then you just take your ice cream scoop Scoop it out. Yum. Yep. And we have our toppers ready. And this is great for like a mega head party, right? Yep. There you go. Go three. And this is how many calories are in about one serving of this? One scoop is 130 calories. Well, excuse me, a half a cup. A half a cup is 130 calories. Um, and we have chocolate and strawberries, but you can top with whatever your favorite. Strawberries are in season right now. Soon peaches and berries will be coming in. And you have your four ingredient frozen yogurt. Simple, easy, you don't need an ice cream maker. However, if you do have an ice cream maker and want to use one, Go ahead and mix all four ingredients. At the beginning, I only mixed the yogurt, the vanilla bean, and the honey, and then we put the half and half in when we put it in the food processor. You can skip all of that, just mix all four ingredients, put them in your ice cream machine, and then let it churn according to manufacturer's instructions. Um, but here we go. Our four ingredient frozen yogurt. Make it all summer long. It's healthy. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, it has about three times the amount of protein as both ice cream and regular frozen yogurt. The Greek yogurt gives it about 10 grams in a half cup, which is, you could eat it for breakfast. <laughs> Great, thanks for joining us.